Well, hiya, my name's Ian Cheeseman. I was born in Manchester, so it is my city and I love the city of Manchester. And naturally, that means I'm a Manchester City supporter. I'm also the reporter of all their games with commentary home and away for BBC Radio Manchester, which uh, of course means that I'm in the city a lot at the games and also travelling all over the world, so I have a lot to compare to. So clearly my number one destination, I would recommend, is the Etihad Stadium. Uh, now that can encompass lots of different things that's matches of course 55,000 capacity these days but also you could take the stadium tour which i've hosted one or two of those myself it's well worth doing really interesting to, to sort of find out the history and how the grass is woven between plastic and where the players come out and all that sort of thing also across the road at the etihad campus is the new academy which has a mini stadium which has women's football which has under 21 football and under 18 football so there's a lot to see in that area and uh, so that therefore naturally that's my number one number two on my list is this place media city which uh, is where i work ostensibly uh, but also it has a history hasn't it it's the manchester ship canal it's the terminus of what made this city great if you look back in history the cotton mills i happen to live at the moment in oldham the cotton mills were fed by the soft water, the ships coming up the canal and now these days it's this fantastic state of the art BBC and ITV and other media, hence the name Media City Complex and uh, very proud to work here, uh, I think it's a great place to come to work every day. Uh, the Lowry Theatre which is just across the road my son works at, so that makes it even more of a sort of family business if you like. Uh, but it's just a beautiful place to look around. When you look at the apartment blocks and the, the buildings, the way they've been coordinated, uh, any foreigner or any visitor to Manchester who comes over here, I'm always proud to bring them here and show them around. Uh, and not least because of the fact that I work here, but also the fantastic history. Number three, which feels like part of a Top of the Pops countdown, which goes back to my childhood. But number three for me is just the city, which encompasses everything so it's a bit of a cop out in a way isn't it but the city itself has great architecture old and new i can remember when piccadilly gardens was very different than it is now it's well worth going now and seeing the tram complex i'm, I'm interested in trams anyway i'm fascinated by that and how it's developed in the city uh, there are places you can go shopping indoors and outdoors there are places to eat um, so the northern quarter for example is quite uh, a quirky little place where you can find places to eat as well so just the city have a get out walk about have a look at the city it's free and you're seeing history everywhere you look number four would be transport hubs my dad worked for british rail so therefore i have a, an extra interest in that anyway but piccadilly railway station even oxford road railway station which is where the old bbc used to be and Victoria Station, which is being modernised at the moment, making it a tramic interchange, that sort of thing. Uh, I love going to train stations. Certainly as a, as a younger person, it was always where my journey started from. These days, Manchester Airport, which is the other big transport hub I would mention, is usually the start for me of going either on a holiday somewhere, of course, or going to Austria, but it could also be that I'm flying out to watch Manchester City in Europe, which is my first love. So it always feels like an exciting place to be. But more than that, it's also, in all those cases, very different looks to them. And I love going when I'm in a foreign place, going to the railway station or looking at the airport of the place I visit, because you see people as well. It's a people place. You see, if you love uh, people watching as I do, you see what the city's all about and you see the type of people who are coming and going as well. I love just sitting there sometimes in a train station or in an airport, just watching people. Number five, my fifth choice is the Manchester Arena. It was originally the 9X Arena, then the MEN Arena, and now it's just known as the Manchester Arena. I was there at the very first event, which was Torval and Dean on ice. I've been lucky enough to go and see loads of shows there, big names, people that are really care about and love about uh, and of course there was ice hockey in there for a while as well it's the biggest indoor arena in Europe well certainly it was at one stage it certainly is at the moment in the UK I think it's the fourth biggest in Europe these days uh, there was as I say ice hockey there I remember Manchester Storm getting 17,000 uh, on the, when the ice pad was down there I've taken the children to go and watch Disney on ice so there's been loads of great memories of that venue the Apollo I suppose comes into it as well from 
from years gone by in particular. There are other venues, but I particularly remember too that uh, there was the Free Trade Hall back in 1977, one of the most exciting as a youngster kids that I, as a, as a youngster uh, concerts that I saw was ABBA in concert at the Free Trade Hall. It's now uh, a hotel, but it's still got the plaque outside from where the Peterloo Massacre was, just outside, which is also part of Manchester's rich history. So go and have a look at those venues. The Manchester Arena doesn't look great from the outside, but once you're in it, it's fantastic. So there you go, my five big places to go in Manchester. And you know what? There's more than that, but those are the five that I've picked out for you.